Welcome back to my channel, In Flight Music, where I go over music production tips and tricks. If you're new here, my name is Ian, and today we're going over some more guitar plugins. Both of them are from Ample Sound. One is 100% free, the Ample Guitar M2 Lite, which is an acoustic guitar from Ample Sound. And we're going to compare that to a premium acoustic guitar with Ample Sound's Ample Guitar Taylor 3. So the first thing that you'll notice right off the bat, starting with the free guitar, you'll see that the free version is still on version 2 while all the premium guitars have been upgraded to version three, one of the easiest ways that you can tell is just by looking at the keyboard. You could actually switch out the look of the keyboard here in the settings. Right now I have the C board key selected. If you don't know what a C board is, it's made by Rolly and it's a really expressive keyboard controller, but I won't get into all of that. But you could switch to flat keys, which looks like this, or your classic control keys. You'll notice that the highlighted key switches are now on top instead of at the bottom of the screen. Right here they have all the highlighted key switches at the bottom in the old versions of their plugins. You'll also notice that all of the settings that are directly underneath the free guitar are now located in this section of the premium guitar on the right. In general, the overall UI has improved dramatically, I'd say. It's a lot easier to read. The buttons, the sliders, the knobs, they're all bigger, so it's easier to get to and read and it just looks cleaner overall. The next thing you'll notice between the free versus the premium guitar, with the free version, you only have finger picking, but with the Ample Guitar Taylor, and I believe the Ample Guitar M3 as well, they actually have three different libraries here. So you have your strum library, your pick library, and your finger library. So now that we're on the finger library, let's actually compare the two libraries. <laughs> And let's play something similar with the Ample Guitar Taylor. To be honest with you, I wasn't expecting that much of a difference, but it's because of the effects here. So that's definitely another thing I should point out in terms of the differences between the free version and the premium versions, or even just version two versus version three of these guitars. So here's version two's effects. And to be honest with you, these effects sound worse than most stock effects inside of your DAW, to be honest. There's not a lot of control and just the overall tone and quality. For example, if we just turn on this reverb, actually the reverb was already on. So let's actually try to make it as wet as the Ample Guitar Taylor. Let's increase the room size a little bit, increase the width and increase the send level. So more of the actual guitar is going into this reverb. So not bad, but if you go into the effects section in the new Ample Guitar 3s, you have a really nice parametric EQ, which also has a frequency analyzer in the background. You also have a compressor with attack release settings and you can control the knee. You can also control the attack and release here as well. This is a little hard to read, but this says RMS. So if you turn this on, it'll switch to RMS detection instead of peak detection, which is what it's on default. This is a hard knee. This is a soft knee. And then you have the ratio. And again, you can control this either right here or up top right here. Then you have this really nice delay as well. And just by double clicking and moving these wherever you'd like, you could actually create where your delays are going to end up. So you can make some pretty unique delays right here. And then last but not least, you have your reverb. You have four different types of rooms that you could choose from. You have room, small hall, hall, and large hall. And then you could control the size either with this knob 
or right down here as well. You have control over the overall volume, but this is the volume of the guitar. This is the actual volume of how much of the guitar is being sent into the reverb right here. So you can get more reverb by increasing this. This will just turn up the overall level. Then you have pre-delay. Again, you can control with the knob or right here. And then you have a low shelf and a high shelf. And that controls the bass level and the treble level. Another unique thing about the Ample Guitar 3s versus 2, you have these presets for each of these effects. These make for great starting points in terms of coming up with your effects chain. So now I've switched the Ample Guitar Taylor back to its default state. So now let's take a listen to these other libraries. Let's listen to the Strum Library. And instead of me playing something, let's actually use the strummer. And let's just listen to some of these default strum patterns. So as you can see, everything is matched to the project tempo. We're at 140, so if I change the actual project tempo, you'll see that the patterns adjust accordingly. But you could also change the time signature here too. So if we went down to 2-4. That's definitely something useful for changing up these longer patterns that would normally be in 4-4 and you actually just want to use the beginning part. I do find that more repetitive strumming tends to work better for trap music, but depending on what type of style or genre that you're working with, you might want to mess around with this time signature a little bit. Keep in mind those eight different patterns aren't all the patterns that this comes with. So you could actually load up presets and it comes with quite a few in many different categories. And this switches the chord mode from selection to detection. Here we have selection where we can select our chords. Definitely check out my Vintage Cherry video if you want a in-depth tutorial on how to use this entire section right here. But again, if we press this button and switch to detect mode, so now whatever chord that we play, it'll actually input that chord into this section right here and the strummer will play whatever chord that we're playing and strum it for us. And just because of that one feature, I actually think that this is the best strumming tool that you can use. I haven't seen any other DAW or plugin that strums this well. And yes, I've done tutorials on other plugins like Scalar, Captain Chord, so on and so forth. All those have strumming features. None of them really compare to this. If you go back to the keyboard, you can actually see where you can input your chords. So make sure you're in the correct octave. And now with my left hand, I should be able to play these chords and the strummer will strum along with me. Let's select our first chord, E minor. So we've listened to the strum library, the finger library. Let's take a listen to the pick library and I'm just gonna play this by hand. You'll notice that we're still in the strum chord mode. The easiest way for me to switch back to normal playing, I'm pretty sure there is a key switch somewhere in these notes, but instead of guessing and clicking around, you could actually just go to the riffer, press play, press stop, and now everything is switched back to your normal mode. The main thing that you'll notice with the pick library versus the strum or finger library, you really hear the attack on the guitar much better. Let's do one last direct comparison. I'm going to turn off all the effects on both plugins. I'm going to switch this back to the finger library. So we're using the same type of library. So this can give you a good idea of the difference between the tone of the Ample Guitar Martin versus the Ample Guitar Taylor. Let's play the Taylor first. And let's listen to the Martin. Mm -hmm. 
So the main thing that I notice and why I decided to go with the Ample Guitar Taylor over the Martin, if you've seen my previous Ample Guitar tutorials, I'm always looking for those warmer sounds. I love clean sounds, but at the end of the day for the genres that I'm working with, I prefer the warmer tones. Another word that I like to use is rounder. And that's what I'm getting from the Taylor over the Mart. However, I would say that if you're looking for an acoustic guitar to really cut through the mix, no matter what genre, I think the Martin probably does a better job, but I really like the warmth and the vibe of the Taylor over the Martin, especially when you listen to these higher notes. And then go to the Taylor. Definitely two different tones. You could definitely find uses for either or. But for me personally, if I had to choose only one acoustic guitar between these two, for me, it would be the Ample Guitar Taylor. If you enjoyed this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified whenever I drop new videos. Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.